In this overview, we are going to review how the line listing app handles repeated stage data. Before we demonstrate how this data is displayed in the line listing app, let us review a record in the capture app that has repeated event data. In this example, we have a COVID-19 surveillance program that has repeated stages for lab request and lab results. However, the principles we will discuss in this demonstration apply to any program that has repeated stages. Let us focus on the lab request stage in this example. For this person, there are four events in the lab request stage. Let's review how this is handled in the line listing application. To create this line list, we will need to select the following items from the input and program dimensions tabs. In this example, we won't need to use the other tabs. We can start by selecting the items from the input tab. Followed by the selections in the program dimensions tab. Let us review the same case we were looking at in the Capture app. We will do this by adding a filter to the local case ID attribute. This attribute is of text type. The filtering menu has several options for adding in conditions on text attributes. Since we know the ID, we will use exactly and enter the ID in this case. Update the table and you should see the events that are associated with this person's record. Since this is repeated data, we can see that the results show each of the events associated with the person's record. There were four events in Capture and we can see four events in the line list. We can demonstrate this concept further by displaying all of the records in this organization unit. We can remove the filter on the local case ID and update the line list. We can sort the list by surname and then scroll through it. We will see that there are multiple lines dedicated to the same person. Each of these records will have multiple events associated with the lab request stage so each of these events are listed in the line listing app when choosing events as the input type. What happens if we recreate this same line list but use enrollment as our input type? Let us do this quickly by using these inputs. Note that when we select enrollment as the input type, we no longer select a specific stage as we are looking at all events across the entire enrollment. Let us select our program. Then switch over to the Program Dimensions tab and add our inputs. When we add in the data elements that are reused across stages, note that the name of the stage is listed next to the data element name. This is because when using the enrollment type input, we are able to select these reused data elements. When we update this line list, we only see one line return instead of four. In this case, when the enrollment input type is being used, only the most recent event is being returned. If we compare this output with the record in Capture, we can see that the most recent event is being shown in the line listing app. In addition to using the most recent event information when selecting enrollment as the input type, the line listing app has some unique features for handling repeated events in an enrollment that allows you 
to show data related to more than one event on the same line for a unique record. If we review this record in Capture, we could select any of these data elements as they are used across the repeated events in this record. As an example, what if we wanted to see the type of specimen that was collected across multiple events related to this record? Back in the line listing app, let's select the type of specimen data element within the layout. When we open this up, we can add in filters as is the case for other data dimensions, but we also have a tab for repeated events. Using this tab, we can define how many repeated event values we want to display related to each unique record and data element combination. As an example, let us set most recent events to three and update our line list. Let us review the line list now. We can see that three values for the type of specimen are displayed, corresponding to repeated events within this unique record. We can do this for multiple data elements in order to get a full picture of repeated data within a single record. For example, we can also add information on repeated events for the type of test data element. After we do this, we can see the repeated information for both of these data elements. Let us remove the filter on local case ID so we can see multiple records. Now when we create this line list using enrollment as the input type, each line represents a unique record. Repeated event data is shown, but is attached to each unique record rather than being displayed as multiple lines as was seen when we selected events as our input type. If a record does not have information as far back as has been defined in the repeated events tab for a particular data dimension, then a blank cell will appear in place of any value. In this overview, we reviewed how the line listing app handles repeated event data. We look forward to hearing your comments on this app. If you are interested, Note that we have several other videos demonstrating further features on using the line listing app. For any questions or feedback, please do not hesitate to contact us on the community of practice.